Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my November 2022 page 112 tag. The page 112 tag was started by Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, he based it off of a French literary prize wherein, uh, where they take uh, the books that are in contention for uh, a prize uh, and they read page 112 of each book and then solely based on the writing of that page without any of the context of the rest of the story they comprise I think a, a, a short list or a long list uh, and go from there. So I've been using this tag since the beginning of COVID uh, to slowly whittle down my physical unread shelves uh, and then build them back up again. <laughs> I take uh, slips of paper out of this handy dandy books and cats mug. I take out three slips of paper and then I read page 112 on uh, the video with you all and then choose one of those books uh, based hopefully on the writing of the page to add to my month's TBR. Or at least that's how I play most months out of the year. Uh, every fourth month I play a little differently. Uh, I take uh, the runner-up book of the past three months and pit those three against each other and then pick one of those. <laughs> uh, it's a great way during NaNoWriMo to uh, cut back on my uh, post-production. <laughs> I have a lot of writing I should be doing instead. <laughs> And it's also a weird time to be filming. Uh, I'm filming during a weird time of the day and then I close my blinds and I don't actually think it's doing much about this lighting. So I'll be jumping away from this clip uh, very soon. Uh, and uh, without further ado, let's go back into the past. I could have sworn that Adela often hovered in the air just above the parquet floor for much longer than the force of gravity allowed. After our game, we usually stayed in the ballroom for a little while, looking at the images cast on the wall opposite the tall arched window by the last rays of the sun, shining low through the moving branches of a hawthorn, until at last they were extinguished. There was something fleeting evanescent about those sparse patterns appearing in constant succession on the pale surface, something which never went beyond a moment of its generation, so to speak. Yet here, in this entwining of sunlight and shadow, always forming and refocusing, you could see mountainous landscapes with glaciers and ice fields, high plateaux, steeps, deserts, fields full of flowers, islands in the sea, coral reefs, archipelagos, and atolls forests bending into the storm, quaking grass and drifting smoke. And once, I remember, said Austerlitz, as we gazed together in this slowly fading world, Adela leaned toward me and asked, Do you see the fronds of the palm trees? Do you see the caravan coming through the dunes over there? By the time Austerlitz repeated this question of Adela's, a question still imprinted on his memory, we were on our way back to the city from Greenwich. Our taxi made slow progress in the dense evening traffic. It had begun to rain. The beams of headlights gleamed on the asphalt, cutting through the windscreen covered with silvery beads. It took us nearly an hour to travel a distance of not much more than three miles to Tower Bridge, by way of Greek Street, Evelyn Street, Lower Road, and Jamaica Road. Austerlitz leaned back with his arms round his rucksack, staring ahead in silence. So this is a tough one for me. There's lots of run-on sentences. There's lots of interjections where somebody's talking and then somebody interrupts. Uh, and there's no quotation marks for speech, which is a big pet peeve of mine. So I'm thinking this is a no for me. These are a lot of the writing habits I don't really like. It is hard to get into the, you know, rhythm of the story. I mean, well, there's all this beautiful language. Uh, all of this descriptive, beautiful language, but, you know, what does it mean for what's happening and why should I care? I, I'm just not feeling it for this one, so I'm going to put it down. And we're starting in the middle of what seems to be a paragraph of dialogue. She seemed a bit disoriented, or maybe just unusually sad. I tried to convince myself that she was fine and that you and I could still spend the day together, but I'm afraid I do need to go check on her. My system flooded with a relief-shame cocktail. I took a breath, delighted that I wasn't being rejected, then quickly adjusted my face into a sympathetic frown. It's okay, I said. Of course, some other time. Cal shook his head no and said yes, as if he'd suddenly confused assent with negation. He was troubled, 
flustered, the opposite of the calm and assured man he'd been the other two times I'd met him. The sand shifted, my perception of him altered in ways I couldn't figure. I felt my chest click open one tiny notch, and then I offered to come along. And then there's a break. My hand is still on his knee in the car, which I realized too late was a poorly planned gesture. What will I do, just keep it here until we get to the nursing home? In fact, I have no idea where we're going. What if it's 45 minutes away? What if it's in Detroit? Maybe I'll just leave my hand here forever, dead weight, heavy, and growing increasingly sweaty on Cal's sharp knee. Finally, desperate, I snatch it away, pretend to cough, and cover my mouth. After a few minutes of silence, during which I contemplate what a mistake it is for me to ever leave the house, we finally pull into the parking structure of Lutheran Manor Assisted Living for Seniors. We have arrived at Lutheran Manor, I announce in an English accent, and luckily Cal laughs. It is a beige, defiantly bland rectangle of a building, pocked with tiny windows. If you didn't know better, the manor could be a plain old apartment building built in the 1960s, a brick and concrete fortress against whimsy. So yeah, this is a strange one, actually. <laughs> I had to look at it a little bit further after even reading this to you to try to figure out the tenses. And now I think I get it. The first part of the page, which is before the break, is in past tense uh, all around. And then the second part is in present tense, which uh, I don't quite understand, but maybe, uh, you know, there's a, a flow to it um, from the previous uh, pages uh, that... Uh, would explain that, you know, probably usually this would then be in present tense, but that, you know, that section in the beginning was some, you know, uh, backstory insert, something like that. So anyway, uh, but there's some intriguing things here. I feel like there's uh, some intriguing relationship uh, uh, clashes. Assuming that Cal is the person talking in the beginning, the main character doesn't want to spend time with him, but also doesn't want to, you know, be disliked. And then she does feel enough, I think, uh, empathy for his situation about like how uncertain he seems about what he's doing that she offers to come anyway. <laughs> and that in itself also seems to be anxiety producing. Like the longer she stays in the car, the more uncomfortable she is. She has his hand on his knee and it, and it seems like she's uncertain with that social interaction and it turns into a big thing where she has to then, you know, make up an excuse to cough to get out of it. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I guess that's all really, uh, you know, that uh, ambiguity of uh, character uh, motivations and interactions and feelings about each other is uh, some of the bread and butter, I suppose, of literary fiction. <laughs> it's what we're trying to parse. Uh, and uh, then I also really like the physical description of uh, the uh, senior nursing home, you know, the whole, you know, uh, mockery of, uh, or maybe I'm reading into that, that's my own bias, mockery of like the droll 1960s <laughs> affectation of architecture, but it was well described, uh, so I like that as well. Uh, so I guess now, after going through it like this, the big thing that's keeping me from wanting to read this book right now is this particular scene has to do with people visiting a nursing home. <laughs> and honestly, for all I know, the person they're visiting in the nursing home is, uh, you know, still really uh, active and spry and, you know, not in uh, any uh, immediate uh, physical danger. Uh, but uh, still, it, you know, gives me the feeling of uh, someone nearing the end of life and needing extra care. And that is not escapism for what I'm going through right now. So I feel like uh, I kind of want to put this down. <laughs> Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, Russian names in here, so I'll probably be uh, definitely uh, more stop and go with this page, but uh, here we go. He came to the factory as a craftsman when the Enterprise was formed. One time during a work gathering, he said, in a positive sense, that clocks run identically everywhere, meaning that all peoples around the world look at clocks and see the same thing. What did they see? Correct. Communism. And he added a Jewish saying, the house is burning, but the clock still keeps time. But that's neither here nor there. They reminded him of that when his time came. He was taken. They decided he'd been talking about some kind of Jewish clocks he was allegedly dreaming of inventing so that they'd show the time properly to Jews, but not to other Soviet people. And this was allegedly how a planned plot would come to victory. Merrick worked at the factory during that time, too, as an apprentice to his uncle. 
a regular criminal gang, but for some reason they didn't touch Merrick. Their famous relative, Natan Yakolovich Bainfest, who in his youth knew Grigory Katovsky himself because Katovsky lived near Belaya Tserkov during the Civil War, was a civil attorney by line of work. He fought his way to a meeting with Prosecutor General Rudenko and declared, you look straight into the eyes of the damned fascist ringleaders and their hirings of all stripes in their conquered den at the Nuremberg trial. Look into the eyes of my relative, Isaac Shmulevich Galperin, born in 1890, who was criminally arrested. You'll immediately discern that he is guilty of nothing, especially because Galperin and the best masters from the factory labored together in the city of Christopol during the years of the war with, with Hitler for the good of the motherland and the military industry, and he was awarded a medal for that. Otherwise, he would have gone personally to the front. But the motherland said, don't go, so he didn't go. But his children all went and fell as heroes. And now my party membership card and all my military awards guarantee what I'm saying. Okay, so um, I feel like a lot is happening on this page that you don't need a lot of context for because it's just immediate uh, uh, danger and drama. Uh, this is uh, the Soviet Union uh, and uh, I think it's uh, well known or well understood that uh, there was a lot of suspicion and Big Brother watching and people being dragged away uh, out of, you know, conspiracy theories about them, you know, conspiring against the motherland. Uh, and Jews in particular were a singular sort of uh, despised class. They often uh, uh, were scapegoated that way. Uh, so that's what we're seeing in here with this unnamed uh, male character, I think. Uh, uh, I guess that we're getting some sort of vignette about him in the beginning, and then we go to Merrick, uh, who is a named character, who, you know, is apparently also working at the same factory and might even be doing some untoward things or something, but uh, he seems to be okay for now. And then finally we get to a speech, which seems to infer, uh, you know, it's about another prisoner um, who, um, I guess, is, is arrested for, you know, some sort of conspiracy against uh, Russia or the Soviet Union, I should say. Uh, and there's a uh, hearkening back to the Nuremberg trials, which were, you know, held against uh, big, uh, the, the Nazis, you know, pe people high up in the party. And of course, uh, uh, at the, the Nazis and, uh, and uh, the Soviets uh, were fighting each other at the end and, you know, communism versus fascism and all that, uh, or fascism versus communism. So I don't know, there's a lot of history that you might be able to pick up on if you know the history. I actually, in fact, am reading another novel right now that takes place in Soviet Russia. So I guess it's all very fresh in my mind and, and it makes it kind of extra interesting, this page. Although in general, it's a bit of a clunky page. Like there's a little bit of a, Here's this unnamed person who, you know, um, was interested in clocks and then, you know, was taken away basically for being a Jew. And then there's a little nod to a named character, but not much. And then there's, you know, some other chatter about uh, getting another, uh, I guess, named character, hopefully getting him off the hook. And uh, uh, so so it's a little disjointed in that way, but it's, it's certainly very intriguing, <laughs> but it's a little disjointed. <laughs> Twinkle, 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 twinkle. It kind of feels like like appropriate like for this speckled lighting. But anyway, we are now back in the present, and I am here to recap the three books I talked about in those past clips, and then pick one of the books. So my August pick was Austerlitz by W. G. Savold. My September pick was Days of Awe by Lauren Fox, and my October pick was Klotzvog by Margarita Kemlin. And I think I'm going to go with this book, uh, Klotzvog by Margarita Kemlin, and I will explain by eliminating the other two books first. With Days of Awe, uh, well, I'm remembering uh, when I picked this up and I was in such a different space in a way because uh, I was in the last uh, couple of weeks of Missy's life at the time, uh, and so now that's kind of imprinted on my, my uh, mind with this book. Uh, but that being said, I am going to be reading it soon enough anyway. Uh, it's uh, going to be at the top of my Goodreads TBR next year, and so uh, I will be picking it up then based on my own resolutions. And I am excited. I feel like uh, it was an interesting page, I guess, in terms of uh, what this character is, <laughs> I don't know, going through uh, in terms of what she feels about the other character. Uh, so uh, I'll just uh, be getting to it a little later. 
And then Austerlitz is the one that continues to be my least favorite uh, in this tag. And I, I'm just not a fan of this uh, rambling stream of consciousness uh, writing style where you just can barely hold on to a thought before another one intrudes on the page. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm not going to be reading it right now, uh, but uh, I'm not going to be getting rid of it anyway. And hopefully when I do get to it, I'll try to, you know, put my best foot forward with reading it. Uh, but again, it is on my Goodreads TBR. So once it does make it to the top of the list, at, at the very least, that's when I'll be reading it. <laughs> But as for Klotzvog, I, don't, I guess uh, a big thing is, you know, the subject matter, you know, talking about uh, Soviet Jewry and what they were going through and uh, having uh, this uh, book by a Russian uh, writer to talk about it. Uh, it's a translated book. It's, I think, relatively unknown. I remember how excited I was when I actually found it at Capitol Hill Used Bookstore. Like, you know, it just felt like a rare gem. You know, I, I go in with my scavenger hunt list of books on my TBR that I uh, am interested in acquiring, and lo and behold, this one of all, any of them was on the shelves. So, yeah, I am uh, really intrigued, and, uh, I, and I hope my intrigue and excitement pays off this month. And that about covers it for me now. Uh, you can find the Goodreads links for all three of these books listed down below if you want more information. Also, in this outro part of the video, I like to highlight uh, other booktubers and their TBR games or readathons or something because I like to feel like this tag is in that milieu and also just to have a place to shout out other booktubers, which is fun. So this month I am going to shout out the Danish Reader Holic and her uh, TBR game, which is Game of Animation. It is a board game where uh, she bases her prompts on uh, different uh, animation uh, studios. Like I think there's like Disney and Barbie and Pixar, and uh, she uh, makes prompts that way. Uh, and the the board and the cards are so pastel and pretty and <laughs> I just uh, re really like the board and I like the game so I will uh, link to her game down below. And I will be back on this channel on Sunday to post my NaNoWriMo Week 2 vlog for all of my NaNoWriMoing and then later in the week I will be posting my uh, monthly author tube video, another tag video I do. It's going to be a very writer heavy week here on the channel, uh, but that being said, uh, again I am uh, recapping the books that I am reading this month uh, in my vlogs, uh, just rambling about them as I read them and inserting them there so uh, you can get some reading content still on this, on this channel this month. <laughs> just putting it out there. <laughs> but in the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.